this is Michael, and I will handle this part. So we'll start with you, Paige. You are the one who is named for your ability to let go of the past, you see, because you've always been willing to turn the page and say, hey, I don't want to play that way anymore because it doesn't appeal to me anymore. I want to turn the page and find out what's in store for me. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I am eager to continue on my trip, you see? And so you, Paige, have been the friend and neighbor of so many people that needed you. They needed you to rely on. They needed you for a shoulder to cry on. They needed you to sit beside them and laugh with them at the ludicrous reality of life in the ditches, you see, because you've had many lifetimes in the ditches. And you also have had the opportunity to apply many stitches to the people who were wounded, you see, because you have been a nurse in many of your lifetimes, Paige, because you nursed women, children, men, and animals back to health. Because you would say, hey, I don't know what to do for you today, but I'll do my best. I'll do my best. And so whether you were what we would designate as a nurse formally or just someone who was there to help others to repair the damage that life had done to them, you were always a good friend to them. Now, as far as historical references, you had a lifetime in the colonies, in the American colonies, where you were a woman who had many children, you see. And you lived to a ripe old age, and you smoked a corn cob pipe, you see. <laughs> and you would say, hey, it's the only pleasure I have today. <laughs> <laughs> the only pleasure I have today, because... I've had to play nursemaid to all these children and then all the babies that came after them <laughs> while they worked in the fields or scrubbed the clothes in boiling water or had to pluck the chickens, you see, or grate the vegetables, etc. And now I just like to sit in my rocking chair and puff my corn cob pipe. And they would say, oh, Granny, we've come to you today to see if you have anything wise to say. And you would say to them, yes, I do. I have some wisdom for you. And what I want to say to you is that if you love me true, then never, ever run away from a challenge that comes your way. Always meet it head on. And don't play the victim, you see, because victims never thrive in reality. It's a hard life, but it's a, and there's a lot of strife, but it's a way to challenge you to be better than you ever thought you could be. You can do more than you ever thought you could do when you put your mind to it and your heart to it. And so if all of you play that way, then I know that my family will continue to be a trust on God, you see, and not some stupid fools who think that they should be sleeping in silk sheets and getting all kinds of treats when they can't even figure out how to open a can of beans, you see. 
I realized that a can of beans wasn't available in that day, but this is something you would say in later lifetimes. Can't open a can of beans and don't complain to me if you're hungry. <laughs> and so now you will grow and grow and grow because you have been willing to face the challenges head on and not run away from them and not say, oh, I can't play today. I can't play today. I have to stay here in my comfortable house and act like a mouse and not trust on my ability to be part of a community that will come to be so powerful that I will sit on my porch one day with a corn cob pipe and say, hey, I'm not going to smoke this thing, but it reminds me of another day when I did say, just meet your challenges head on, dear, and don't run away from them, and everything will be okay. Everything will be okay. And so I welcome you, Paige, because you are the one who has begun to help your family through the coming stages of the destructive energy that must come in order to repair the damage that has been done. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. Man, that's some good advice from my old self. <laughs> I needed that. <laughs> hmm. You're so crafty. I could just see you, even back in the colonial days, sewing and painting things and creating things because you had to. Right. Sounds like when we get to a point where we have to do a lot of things. <laughs> yep, and do it. Just do it. Not to do it. It's a challenge and it's a game you can't lose. Life is a game you can't lose. Right. Unless you run from it. And then you're kind of a loser. Okay. She should know that she did know the others in here once upon a time. Because once upon a time, you all did gather together in a place where you had to trace your history through the dark ages of the mystery of your origins, you see, because none of you knew why you were there. None of you knew why you were there, because you see, what happened was that there was a darkness that descended on the earth one day, that day, and there did come to be an angel of the Lord who said, hey, come this way, come this way, come this way. And so you all followed the angel of the Lord who did say, come this way, come this way, come this way. And you survived that day because you all ended up together in a boat that would float upon the sea because the earth had a huge hiccup, you see, that day, and a great tsunami came your way. And instead of running away, each of you felt the impl impulse to climb into this boat that was setting in dry dock, you might say, although they didn't call it that in that day. It was beached for safety against any one who would try to take it away. 
So you all climbed into the boat just because you heard the angel say, hey, get in that boat today. And when the tsunami came, it carried you far inland, and then it took you back out to sea. But you all survived together that day, although you did not know each other. The only saving grace for all of you was that you let your instincts guide you. And you all ran for that boat and climbed into it, you see, with members of your family. And so eventually you came back to shore. And you found friendship, you see, because you knew that you had all been directed by your instinctive trust on something greater than you. And that instinctive trust has brought you back together, you see. And this happened long, long ago when you all lived by the sea, although you did not necessarily know each other other than to see the others at a distance. But you all took off running for that boat. And you all did float away while others drowned that day. And this is so important for you to understand that the lay of the land is such that everybody has a hand in its reconstruction, you see, because there was so much destruction that day and all the habitations were washed away that you had to rebuild from scratch and create a new community. Only this time, you built a little further from the ocean, you see, up on a hill, because you learned your lesson, you see. And this is the way it works, you see. If nobody had survived, nobody would have learned a lesson that day, right? except maybe the ones that came and found the devastation, but there was nobody else to come and find the devastation. You have to live far away from other habitations, you see. But you survived, and you learned the lesson. And so you came to be a little wiser, you see. And this is the benefit of trusting on your heart, you see that your heart will guide you if you let it guide you. If you fight it and you run away in the opposite direction, you might drown, you see. And so today you've all been listening to your heart in order to come together and say, hey, will this boat float? <laughs> Even though you were not familiar with the ideas of tsunamis in that day, you followed your instincts. You just didn't know what was going on because the earth shook far away. And someone said, I wonder what happened that day. And you didn't know. But while everybody else stood around with their thumbs in their mouths, something said to you, get into that boat, get into that boat, and it will float. And the rest got plucked up out of the sea and taken to heaven that day. And they could look down and say, why didn't we get in that boat? Why didn't we get in that boat? Because nobody told us to get in that boat. Who told those people to get in that boat? <laughs> and that's because they didn't know that God talks to us through our heart, you see. And God will come to us and say, hey, there's a boat coming for you. Why don't you get in it? And then you won't drown. And those who say, no, thank you, I'm fine. I'm just waiting for an angel of mine to come and pick me up out of the sea and carry me safely away, you say. And that did happen to the other people that day. And so the price you pay, you see, for not drowning in the sea is to be the ones that help humanity to move forward. Because the ones who got picked up that day went to heaven and they were happy. 
and free. But the ones that stayed behind had to be the ones that picked up after them, you see. Do you under this story, understand this story? Okay, good. Yes. The inspiration for the new nation is the ability to trust on the fact that every part you have ever played is important to you. So Jim had a trust on Jesus in his day because Jim was a follower of John the Baptist, you see. And John said to him, see that guy over there? The scruffy one that's even scruffier than me. He is pretty smart, you see. And I think he might have a clue how it is that God wants you to do something to help humanity. Because Jim had a yen to do something that would change the trajectory of life on earth because people were pretty miserable then. People were really miserable in the day, I have to tell you. They didn't know which way to turn. Because wherever you get a turn, you either had the Jewish elite who were telling you how to make them rich, you see. Or you had the Romans who were telling you that the Jewish elite had control of you and they would just back them up or you had to trust on the strange stories that the various slaves would tell you of their lives in distant lands because there were slaves in Palestine in that day and age and they came from places as far away as what we would consider Germany today and they had a lot to say about the way they lived before the Romans came and took them into captivity. And the Jews had been in captivity for so long they didn't even realize that they were captive, you see. They just thought they were having to live in misery because God was punishing them for the fact that they didn't make enough sacrifices, you see. And so they had to be miserable because they couldn't afford the fee for the sacrifices, you see. So it just kept them in a karmic round again and again and again. And there was a tendency in that day and age to say, I think if I could just get away from all of this, I could play in a different way. And of course, John would say, well, I'd like to do that myself, you see. And so why don't we try to find a place where we can all play together, where we can escape all the ones that are trying to control us, you see. And they said, well, let's do that. And John said, okay, we've got to find a place where we can stay. And the only places where they can't find us are kind of inhospitable, you see. And we have to find a way to clothe ourselves and feed ourselves and stay warm when it's cold. And so they tried, but it wasn't very easy, you see. And so when Jesus came along with his tail to tail, John said, well, maybe you might want to listen to him because I think he's got a clue. And I think he might help you to figure it out. Because John knew that he had to brew a different stew, you see, than Jesus did. Because John was so angry. John was so angry at the way people behaved that he could be a bit rough on them, you see and tell them they had to do this or that or the other. And, you know, that was Steve, so obviously, you know, his personality. And 
he said, but I can't give you hope the way Jesus can. Jesus can give you hope because Jesus has this way of speaking, you see, that would cause his audience to say, what are you talking about today? You mean if I go away to heaven, I'll be happy? And maybe I can't be born into a different society like the ones the slaves talk about where they were free. And Jesus would say, that's a possibility. If you play in a good way and you say to God, I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not afraid of death. But I refuse to be a slave, you see. I refuse to be a slave to the Romans or the Jewish elite. I'm going to get a seat on the train to heaven, you see. And maybe I'll be reborn in one of those countries where I will be free. And so the people that said that in a later day would come to America, you see. And they would say, I want to be in a land where I can be free. I want to be born in a land where I can be free and I won't have to be a slave, you see. Of course, they weren't the only ones that came, but they were the ones who started the game. They were the brave pilgrims, you see, who said, we're not going to play your game today. We're not going to trust on your God and your reality because we have our own you see and we think we should just go away and find a place where we could live in peace and harmony and so all of this goes back to john you see his idea that if they could just find a place where they could live in peace and harmony then they could be together you see and not bothered by the ones who tried to tell them how to wear their hair they could just wear it the way they wanted to wear it there. So you see the connections here? They've been going on through many lifetimes in many ways because the tapestry has been being created from these consistent colors, you see, that wind through and through the pattern of reality that we all share. We all share the pattern of reality. However, because so many threads have gone dark, you see, because they lost their colors to the dark energy, because they were afraid to leave the dark, you see, for fear of their shadows, the tapestry has grown to be very, very dark in some places and lighter in other places and brighter, but it's not consistent. It's not well integrated, you see. The balance is off. And so the tapestry has begun to warp. That's the way it's say it. It's begun to warp. It's begun to pull this way and that way and there's gaps, you see between the threads that show what's below. And what's below is your history. Because the tapestry builds upon itself, you see. It builds upon its own history. It's like an archeological excavation when you began to look beneath the surface and you look at your history. And more and more people are beginning to see that there is something underneath the apparent reality that's very important to see in order to redeem their energy on being free of the cacophony that keeps coming to the surface, you see. The cacophony keeps coming to the surface because of the lack of trust on your own history. So that's why it's important to know your history. 
so you can let it go. And that was why Steve was so insistent that Steph tell the story so that he could say, this is me, this is me, people. Just like Jesus needs to say, this is me, you've got it wrong. So he can let it go. So he can be genuine, you see, and not deceive people about his own history. So when we talk about it in a group, we come to see our own history. And some of us have played some pretty dark parts. And we don't like to have to talk about those because it starts a resistance, you see, to the trust on our history. So those who are from Nibiru have to take responsibility for the fact that they destroyed their own planet, you see. And that's a very dark history. And that they had to learn from it, you see. They had to learn from it. And some survived, and those were the Anunnaki, who became the ones that you thought were the villains in the story, when they were really the saviors, you see. Because they went into space, and they remembered what happened on Nibiru. And the ones who went to heaven said, hey, we're home. Thank God we don't have to live in that place anymore. We don't even want to think about it anymore. And so they had to go on and reincarnate in other places. But they didn't really remember their history until God came to them to say, hey, it's time to wake up today. It's time to wake up today. And I think I have a new way for you to play. And that's when they went to Mars, you see. Some of them, the ones that woke up to hear what Jesus said. I mean, God said. Because it was like the ones who heard the angel say, get in the boat, get in the boat today. And so some of them heard a voice that said, come over here, come over here. You can reincarnate on that planet today. And they said, okay. Even though... They had been reincarnating with a lot of other people, you might say, or a lot of other souls on a distant planet, you see, that wasn't that great, but it was what they had. And they said, okay, I'll follow you today. And so they ended up on Mars, you see. And then after they destroyed Mars, they had to say, we screwed it up again today. We screwed it up today. But there was nobody left to remember that day because they all perished until God did say, hey, come this way. There's another place you can reincarnate if you're ready. And they said, okay, okay. And they reincarnated on earth, you see. And the ancient memories of the Anunnaki reminded them of their own history, you see, because the Anunnaki had carried this history with them and they imparted it to the ones that they created that we call the Elohim and the Elohim remembered it, you see, because it was their own history. They called it to mind and they said, well, this resonates with me that we once were fellows, you see, and the Anunnaki said, well, I hate to tell you, but it's over now. It's over now. Because we never were able to redeem our energy on the fact that we destroyed our own planet, you see. And we've never dared to try it again. We've never dared to try it again. And so they had to work it out between them, you see because they were the opposing sides of the equation. And they had to put the pieces back together to figure it out, because they were in it together, you see, because all of humanity is in it together, and so is all of life. All of life in the universe is in it together. However, you can't go abracadabra 
And now all of the life in the universe has to behave the way I want it to. You start with a little group, you see. Just like the amoeba had to start from a very humble beginning. And eventually, the human body was created because all the cells are working together, you see. So you start from a very humble beginning. And if you look at it this way, you're halfway there. Because you have these beautiful bodies, you see. And now, if you can come back into a community that trusts on another, the way some animals do, then you will begin to reincorporate your energy into a good vibration and that will help you to see that you're not the victims of your reality. You are the creators and you create it step by step, piece by piece. You don't suddenly say, well, this is the way it's going to be today. You get up one day and you say, hey, I've been playing the same day way for a long time. Maybe today I'll change something. Maybe instead of drinking coffee, I'll drink tea. And the next thing you know, you'll be doing something different, you see. You'll meet someone who only drinks tea. And you say, well, let's go out for tea today. <laughs> and they say, thank God, I hate being around those people who only drink coffee. And then you may make a new friend. You never know. You never know. But you have to trust on reality. And now Steph is telling me what about Paula and I haven't forgotten about Paula, you see. Paula was the one that would always be willing to help another, you see. Because she used her good energy in order to protect them from harm, you see. She would gather them up in her arms when they were little and she would say, come on, we got to go this way because there's something coming down that path that we don't want to see. Let's hide over here today. And they would hide over there today in order to avoid some tragedy. And this is the way she would play. Because Paula had a lifetime as a Native American, you see. And she lived in a wild state, you might say, with her children and her husband who went away to fight, you see, one day. And he never came back. And he never came back. So she had to go on living with her children. But there was always this concern that they would be attacked one day. And they were attacked not by the settlers, you see, but by other tribes who wanted their land and who didn't like the fact that there had been so many disagreements between the different members of the tribes, you see, through many generations. So they carried resentments, you might say, vendettas against each other. And they would carry away the children, and they would say, ah, that'll teach them today. We'll train their own children to fight them, you see. And so she was very careful, and she would hide her children whenever danger approached and she would make sure they were safe and they all grew up to say thank you today for taking care of us and they had to learn to play in a different way because by then the Native Americans were having to succumb to the power of the new nation you see and the land grab was going on However, it was her part to play that saved them that day. 
so that they could learn their lessons. They could survive to learn their lessons and to say, well, we learned some things today. We learned that things will not always stay the same, you see. And we have to be a little smarter than the enemy in order to survive. And, of course, they have to learn that there is no enemies except the enemy inside of you. But that is just another point of view that so many people have to learn. But you can't get there until, except step by step, you see. You have to go step by step. And the ones who survive on Earth through the tragedies are the ones who move humanity forward. Because that intelligence, wisdom, and experience is passed down from generation to generation. But when the generations are destroyed, you see, so there are no survivors. There is no ability for society to recover. And therefore, the ones who survive have the responsibility of passing on their wisdom, you see. And that is the reality of what we're dealing with here today. <laughs>